With the PC component market improving, there really hasn't been a better time than now to get into gaming. From amazing next-gen consoles to ultra-powerful custom-built systems, technology really is moving at an incredible pace. But if you're interested in jumping headfirst into PC gaming and you only have about $1,000 to spend, how do you know where to look? To Danny's tech channel, of course. Hey everyone, welcome to Danny's Tech Channel. I'm Danny, and if you've never been here before, I like to frequently do hardware reviews, PC builds, and sometimes I do how-to videos like this one here. I'm gonna jump right into this today. I wanna show you how to get a gaming PC for less than $1,000. Whether it be you building one yourself or you picking one up from a system integrator or SI. There's actually some decent options out there, and I'm gonna tell you about them right now. Let's get into it. My very first suggestion I'm gonna go with is just build it yourself. That's honestly the best option to me now, and it wasn't in the past. There's a few benefits to building the PC yourself, and I wanna highlight them real quick. The first thing is price for performance is actually improving a lot. Second thing, personal satisfaction is one of the highest things to me, and you get that out of building your own PC. The third benefit of building your own PC is a guaranteed upgrade path. By you buying the parts yourself, there's no like proprietary parts that have to stay with that system, so you can swap things out however you want. I wanna show you exactly the parts that I suggest to be able to build your own PC. I like to use PC Part Picker because it's fast and easy and it will usually show you if the components are compatible or not. You can see compatibility is green, it'll show up red or yellow if something's not gonna work with each other. This is the best PC I've found, and you can see it comes in at $932.90 USD. That's with shipping. That's not tax included though, so the price may change for your area. And this doesn't include Windows. The one I've got here that I listed, the i5-12400F is honestly one of the best CPUs you can choose right now. It's six cores and 12 threads. This is Intel's new 12th gen architecture. It does not have their big cores and their little cores like um, some of the other CPUs, their K-series, but it does have a boost clock up to 4.4 gigahertz. And I mean, six cores and 12 threads is plenty for gaming. And you can do a little bit of streaming or content creation if you like with that. I didn't put a CPU cooler in because it comes with Intel's CPU cooler in the box. Not the best performing cooler, but it will get you by until you can afford to buy something new. To pair this, I've got the ASUS Tough Gaming B660M Plus Wi-Fi motherboard. I love getting Wi-Fi built into the motherboard. And this motherboard has the built-in IO shield, which I absolutely love. And I wish all the companies would do this now. 16 gigs of G-Skill Ripjaw V-Series. This is 3200 megahertz. It's a nice sweet spot. You can get yourself 3600 if you like, but 16 gigs should be the standard. If you wanna jump up to 32, it's just gonna cost you a little bit more. This is really nice because it's only $64 really good price for this. RAM has come down quite a bit in the past year or so. For storage, I've got the Crucial P2 one terabyte NVMe. Storage has come down a lot over the past couple months and I wouldn't recommend anything less than a terabyte now. Games are becoming such huge file sizes. I mean, Call of Duty is over 100 gigabytes on its own. So I would recommend getting a terabyte. If you can afford it, get a two terabyte. For the ever important graphics card, I chose the Gigabyte. Radeon RX 6500 XT. This is the Eagle card. There are other 5600 XT cards you can pick up. The motherboard and the CPU have PCI 4.0, which the graphics card needs to get its full potential out of it because it's a 4.0 times four um, transfer speed. I'm not gonna get into specifics of it, mainly because I don't understand myself, but I do know that you get the best performance when you pair it with a PCI 4.0 CPU. I stuck all this in the Cooler Master Masterbox MB311L. This is a micro ATX case because it fits the micro ATX board. And it's got really good airflow and RGB fans included with it for $75. This is really one of the best performing cases you can get. Now I did a full review on this case and if you want to check it out, I'll leave it up in the YouTube card. I really, really like it and I've used it in a lot of builds here on the channel. And then for the power supply, I chose the Corsair RMX the 2018 model, a 650 watt. This is an 80 plus gold and it's fully modular. That's a really good price on that power supply considering a year or so ago, they were about $130. Now it's only $63 USD. But the beauty of this is it gives you an upgrade path later. You've got a decent power supply. You've got a good motherboard that can slap in an i7 or an i9 later on if you want. And uh, you can always add more RAM, get a bigger hard drive. There's 
plenty of options for you in the future. Now, if PC building isn't for you and you don't wanna do it or don't wanna learn how to do it, there's plenty of system integrators that offer actually really good options at pretty decent prices. I wanna talk about them right now. The first one I wanna look at is iBuyPower. I went down all these companies' websites and this is the cheapest system in integrated PC that I could find. You could see right here, they've got one for $899. This is their only PC under $1,000 I could pop up that has a built-in GPU. I'm gonna jump back and forth between my pre-built PC that I did and all of these PCs that I'm looking at because that's what I'm comparing it to. If you're gonna be building your own, you have to know what other options there are out there if you decide not to build it yourself. So remember, my PC was under $1,000 and I had a 12400F and an RX 6500 XT. This has a 1650, which is worse performance than an RX 6500 XT and a Ryzen 3 instead of an i5. And it has a 500 gig hard drive instead of a terabyte like I paired up. So this is $900, it's about $50 less than what I had said about spending on your own PC and you get lesser components. So I buy power really doesn't have a whole lot of options under, it only has one option under $1,000. And you also have the potentially bad airflow case. There's really nothing in the front there. That's all glass, that's not mesh or anything. I still think my built system that I designed is better, is a better option than what this is. All right, let's move on to cyber power. They have some decent options below $1,000. In fact, they have the most selection out there. This one ships out next business day, it's $100 off. It's $899, it's got an i3-12100F and a 3050. It's got 16 gigs of RAM, which is nice, and a B660 motherboard and a terabyte NVMe. So CyberPower is actually a better solution than iBuyPower was, as you can see. Everything's good on that except for the i3. I would step it up to an i5. I mean, our PC had an i5, but a 3050 is a really good option. Now, this one's not as great, an i5-9600KF with a RX 5500XT. I kind of steer away from that. Here's a 500 gig NVMe because you can step up a little bit more and here's an i5 11400F and an RTX 3050 and then a terabyte NVMe drive. Here's one that's almost exactly what I was looking at building myself. This is a B660 motherboard, a terabyte NVMe and a 12400F with a 3050. This is a great option right here. I would suggest this be your top choice when it comes to spending $1,000 or less and getting the best performance out of it. Go with that one. Let's skip over to Newegg. They've got good options as far as PCs go. Newegg's ABS brand, that's their house brand uh, pre-built systems. They don't have anything under $1,000. The closest thing they have is $1,099, but they do offer good price for performance here. Their ABS Master Gaming PC is $1,099, and it's got a 10400F and an RTX 3060. That's not too bad, honestly, but if you're looking to spend less than $1,000 and we strictly stay to that budget, they don't have anything. Everything's out of stock, out of stock. For less than $1,000, all their uh, pre-built systems are out of stock. NZXT is another option. They don't have anything with a dedicated GPU in stock currently. All of their pre-built systems are over $1,000. Uh, here's one that's in low stock. That's their starter PC. It's got a pretty good combo. It's um, also a 3050 and a 10400F. So you're looking at $1,100 once again. These are all USD prices, by the way. And uh, it's a decent combo, but however, you've got a 500 gig hard drive once again. You're gonna fill that up fairly quickly. And uh, you've got a 10 series CPU in it versus a 12 series over on like the CyberPower PC. And then lastly, let's take a look at Alienware. Alienware, uh, I don't suggest them at all. They're a sub company of Dell and they really overcharge for what they're giving you. Their cheapest PC is $999, and you're getting, for that money, you get a decent CPU, you get a Ryzen 5 5600X, but your graphics card is an RX 5300. This is a three gigabyte card. That is not gonna last you into the future, and you get one eight gig stick of DDR4 memory. You don't want one eight gig stick. I don't know why they couldn't give you 16 gigs for that price. And then the worst kicker of this whole thing is you get a one terabyte standard hard drive, like a spinning hard drive. We're in 2022 people. You do not need a one terabyte standard hard drive. So they're charging you a thousand dollars. They're not giving you an SSD. They're giving you one stick of RAM and they're giving you a very low end graphics card. 
So as far as Alienware goes, I would suggest to stay away. If you wanna jump up to something better, the only thing they offer is a $1,600 setup. It's got good system components, but you're talking about jumping up $600. Another thing about Alienware is they use proprietary parts. I don't suggest going with them because you can't really swap things out. You can add sticks of RAM or you can swap out the GPU, but that's pretty much where it ends. If you wanna do anything with the motherboard, their motherboard has to stay in their case. So you can't swap out your case. It's hard to change out the power supply because the power supply usually has proprietary plugs that have to go to their motherboard. So if you don't have enough power, good luck changing that out. These are my two suggestions to wrap this whole thing up. If you wanna spend $1,000 or less, you do not wanna spend a penny more, you don't have a penny more, go with building it yourself and use the PC part picker list that I said earlier. I'll leave a link below with all those parts broken down. Um, that's what I would suggest. You could pair it with an RX 6500 XT and it'll perform really good at 1080p. Or if you can find one, an RTX 3050. Those are the best low-end GPUs right now, really the only low-end GPUs, unless you wanna go with a used GPU, but this is strictly a brand new uh, system. So that's what I would say go with, or go with something like uh, CyberPower has. They've got a lot of good options as far as these uh, CPU and GPU combos go. You can get the i3 version with the RTX 3050, or you can go with that $1,000 one I said that has the 12400F and the RTX 3050. Those are your best options with any of those pre-builds. The second option is if you can spare it, save up like $200 more and get yourself a far better gaming PC. Uh, Newegg has options, CyberPower, iBuyPower, they all have something that's just beyond that $1,000 limit and they pair them, most of them pair them with an RTX 3060. Or you can get an RX 6600 XT or a 6600. Those options are really good for just a little bit more money. They all give you a terabyte hard drive. Try to look for that when you're doing something like I had said. That's just gonna give you the best gaming experience for around that kind of money, right around that $1,000 price point. Those are your best options. I hope I gave you some ideas as to building your PC or buying a PC from a system integrator. I honestly have no idea how to end this video, so I'm just gonna end it. This is it. There's no nothing else. Go buy yourself a PC. Build it, buy it, whatever you wanna do. Oh, also check out some of these other videos here and uh, don't forget to subscribe, that kind of stuff. All the YouTube-y things. You make me lose my mind.